Architecture obviously is a very tangible thing. Buildings last a long time, and they change the aesthetic of a city. A lot of responsibility on architects to make spaces and places that are valuable to people, that are healthy for people, and thoughtful. Projects are inherently sustainable when they're embraced by the people that use them, and that's what makes good architecture. Sometimes uh, moments of inspiration come from unexpected places. It's just this old building on the side of the road that's just been taken over by nature, and the vines have just completely engulfed this, and we walk into this you know, dappled light space and are just blown away by this natural born character. How can we recreate that? And so that became an inspirational kind of precedent. Grew up in Bowling Green, Kentucky, till I was about nine years old. We had a, an interesting small little farm there, low slung house that uh, kind of ranch style house that my dad built. I have a lot of good memories of this kind of central living space, um, kind of very well connected through a simple sliding patio door, very strongly connected to the land and the ability to run inside and outside. And then when I was nine, I moved to Dequeen, Arkansas, living in a totally different type of house in a larger home, but smaller spaces compartmentalized. I think all that has shaped my thoughts on home and where I live now and, and the way that I uh, approach, conceptually approach design projects for, for clients. Architecture should reflect uh, what's important and the concepts that are important to people today. That leads us to think about space in more modern terms, not necessarily be tied to traditionally what a space should be like or what a building should look like or what a home should look like. Since having a daughter, there are little things that, that I've thought about in different ways. I think more and more about healthy spaces. I think about my own home and how sustainable space can be. I think that's affected me in a lot more ways. And I always thought it was really bizarre that the master bedrooms are always large and have just the bed in it. And the kids' rooms are always small and they're crammed with the bed and the toys and the shelves. And I think our norms or our traditional space making is kind of inverted from the way we really live. Why wouldn't the kids' rooms be larger, the parents' rooms smaller? Eight hours a day, nine months a year, for 13 years of your life, K through 12, you are going to be in a school building. Those buildings should not suck. They should not be like prisons. They should be healthy spaces. They should be uh, inspiring spaces. They should have good materials and be revealing of the way buildings are put together. And so much of the built school environment is almost the opposite of that. Architecture can be tangible in a daily practical way. It's very important in the way we work. And I think that's worthy of most of our emotion and effort. approach a project, what I want to provide is a really beautiful singular space that operates perfectly. From observation of my life, my childhood growing up, to the way uh, we've modified our home, the way my wife, my daughter, and I live, to then observing and understanding kind of the patterns, perceptions of, of our clients that come in, it's making a home's kind of, it's kind of a big deal. An apartment project can be a beautifully designed building. It can be a great space to come home to. Sustainable multifamily design is so intriguing is because you have the greatest opportunity to affect the most people in multifamily projects. Our real first endeavor was the Eco Modern Flats project, which uh, turned out to be the first Lead for Homes multifamily platinum project in the state of Arkansas. The Eco Modern Flats comprises about four buildings that were built in the late 60s, early 70s. Uh, they're good bones in these buildings. So it was an interior renovation of the 96 apartment units and also an exterior renovation of the entire site really to try to capitalize on the residual spaces between the buildings and start to think about how we can incorporate the sustainable features that we wanted to add to the project to actually become aesthetic features that are recognizable and kind of iconic. And so we were able to take that and add hopefully another 40, 50, 60 years of life to these existing structures. There's a lot of embodied energy in a building. Uh, it's a very sustainable approach. It keeps landfills from getting more and more concrete and brick and sticks and all that good construction material that we really should be throwing away if we don't have to.
there's been somewhat of a disconnect from the architect as a community builder. And that's something I'm personally trying to engage in. We have a responsibility as designers and architects to be part of the community. And so that doesn't just mean building buildings in the town. It means building buildings that have a positive influence and help revitalize areas of town that have a positive influence on communities themselves.